Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is June, and I'm a Googler on the Global Business Strategy team based in 1098 in Mountain View. I'm super excited to introduce you to the Dover Quartet, who I'm very lucky to call personal friends. Uh, I just saw them yesterday perform at the Green Music Center in Sonoma, and they did a phenomenal job, and they'll be performing some of the pieces they played yesterday for you today. Uh, they are finishing up their US tour, and basically right after this concert, they're going to be jetting off and going to the next performance and eventually head into Germany. Um, don't want to speak too much because I want them to introduce themselves and tell you more about uh, themselves and the music, but I did want to uh, introduce the four of them. So we have Joel and Brian on violin, and then Camden on the cello, and Milena, Mil Milena on the viola. The Dover Quartet was recently named a quartet in residence for the Kennedy Center in DC, which is amazing news, so congrats to them. And they are also the official quartet in residence at Northwestern University, where they currently teach. Um, they also just performed at Carnegie Hall with superstar violinist Janine Jansen and pianist Jean-Yves Thibaudet. They came out with two CDs last year, and they are available on Google Play Music, so you should check them out, <laughs> search Dover Quartet, and it should come up. Um, Milena, I'm just going to hand it over to you so you can talk a bit more about the quartet and the music. Yeah, uh, We're so excited to be here, really happy that so many of you came. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we formed about nine years ago while we were all still in undergrad, which is where most of us met, although the two violinists over there have known one another since they were 13 years old, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we've basically been married to one another since those nine years ago. Um, we were all at a conservatory in Philadelphia called the Curtis Institute of Music. And um, we, the chamber music was a big part of the education there, so um, we were all playing in multiple different groups every year that we were there. And we were all friends, we all admired and loved one another's playing. Uh, and actually Camden and I, from the, the outset, when we entered school, we started playing with one another and just loved it. Um, and basically, we were in a group together since that first week of school. We never were not in a group together. So we've been together for even longer. What's that, like 11 years? And um, Joel and Brian as well, they were in a quartet together the year they entered Curtis, which was the year before Ken and I. So eventually, one day, the two halves of us, a quote unquote bottomless quartet and a topless quartet, joined together to form a full quartet. We loved playing with each other and we had very quickly, we had this thing that we call the relationship talk. Like, is this just for, for school? Is it just a fling? Or is this for the long term? And we were all on the same page and our first big mark of commitment was applying for a master's degree together as a group. So we went to Rice University in Houston um, where they have a special program for string quartets where they take one group every two years to do a master's degree specializing in string quartet. So we went there, and from there we moved back to Philly, which is where we're now based. Um, even though we do teach at Northwestern, we still call Philly home. Um, and now we just tour full time, teach at Northwestern part time, and this is our life. Yeah, that's true. We we give about 140 concerts a year uh, all over the world, and can imagine all the travel days that go into something like that. Um, but it's wonderful when you're in a place like California and you can go to beer tastings and wine tastings and things like that. So uh, we don't do too badly. And we also never get to perform in a place with a projector. So <laughs> since none of you guys really know us, we thought we'd show you this trailer. We're actually embarking on a really interesting journey. We have actually completed the filming for a documentary that will be a full-length documentary um, with a wonderful director who actually, he uh, produced and directed this movie called Chops, if you get a chance to watch it, which is about young jazz musicians, and it was really incredible, really inspiring. And so we approached him about doing a documentary about chamber music, the, re the reason being, we're traveling all the time, and people always ask us what we do, and when we tell them that we play Beethoven, for some reason, they're really amazed. They're like, you guys don't look like classical musicians. <laughs> and <laughs> it made us wonder, like, what is it that people think classical musicians look like? Like, they wear old powdery wigs still or something? I don't know. <laughs> so after a couple of years of that, we actually just we got more and more passionate about spreading the reality of what it's like to be a classical musician in 2018. Um, so we started filming this documentary and here's the, the trailer. Thank you. 
Tonight is the Dover's album release event uh, for their uh, very first album called Tribute. Uh, this is a recording of repertoire by Mozart uh, that is paying tribute to their mentors, uh, the Guarneri Quartet, uh, which was one of the, the great quartets of the 20th century. Uh, the Dover was lucky enough to study with members of the Guarneri Quartet. And this recording is the same repertoire that the Guarneri recorded on their debut disc. Uh, and it's recorded exactly 50 years after that first album came out. Michael Tree and, and Arnold Steinhardt, uh, the founding violist and first violinist of the Guarneri Quartet, will both be here tonight. Next step for the Dover is for them not to be somewhat of an insider secret in chair music. And that is something that's already changing. They are starting to play more and more at really prominent venues and with these prominent collaborators, attracting attention of major media. I think they're gonna become a household name in the way that not a lot of quartets have. So, uh, you know, just listening to you, how masterfully you played that, I think you really did succeed and have this, this sense of ease about your music making. So, you know, I, you're doing it. <laughs> They have really become the leading young string quartet in the world right now. And they play 120 concerts a year, which is a schedule that very, very few quartets maintain. So actually, you see a little Kickstarter thing there. We did uh, launch a successful Kickstarter, and that's how we managed to fi finish the filming uh, for the documentary. And that trailer was after one day of filming. Um, that was November 2016, I believe. Um, and now we've done an entire year of filming, including in uh, China, in Austria, like all over the world, all, all over the place. Um, the types of things that they were, they interviewed us and our um, colleagues and our mentors and presenters, um, and we get into really personal things. It's not just about uh, the the job, I guess. It's not just about the performing and the practicing and the rehearsing, but also just kind of the people behind the music and the, our personal lives. And they even interviewed my fiance for like three hours about it. So. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very personal experience, and uh, we're we're really excited about it. We actually started. We did start a a nonprofit entity, which will be used partly for this project, but in the future for commissions of new works and things like that. And if you're interested in contributing or being involved in some way, don't hesitate to reach out. Our email is also really easy to remember. It's just doverquartet at gmail dot com. Um, super easy. Um, so with that, let's go to the Schumann, this amazing and and f just one of the most successful piano quintets ever written. It's so catchy, it's so joyful and exuberant and very romantic. And one thing that's really cool about Schumann is he almost always found a way to work his wife's name into his music. So one theme that you'll hear in this piece goes da 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 da, -da and then there's an answer in the viola and we trade back and forth. 
It's a very romantic duet. Um, but he gets the idea for the da dum from Clara, which he uses in almost all of his pieces. It's really incredible. He he was so in love with her. And actually, he wrote only three string quartets, so the kind of things that we could play without June's help. <laughs> and uh, he wrote them all at once, and they were all a birthday gift to Clara and were premiered, actually, at her birthday party in their home in Leipzig, which is very... So he was a, he was a very romantic person. Schumann had a pretty tragic life and had uh, some severe mental health issues that escalated and eventually he uh, he took his own life which is a great tragedy um, his output of music went from really long patches of of nothing no writing at all and then he would have a year where he wrote like a hundred incredible pieces this piece that we're about to play the first movement of uh, was from one of those great years he was definitely on a high and was writing like it was just the most beautiful natural thing in the world so we're so excited to be sharing the stage with june and uh hope you enjoy this great piece by schumann thanks
Let's give it up for June. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah, June. Woo. <laughs> so you might have noticed on your programs, if you have them, um, it says boarding on there. We really, we, th we were thinking about it and we, th we thought it would be a better experience to play a full work for you. We had been toying with the idea of only doing movements of pieces here and there. Um, so we actually, instead of doing the boarding, we're going to do the entire Mendelssohn Quartet that we're going to play for you. And it's the one you see up on the screen there. Um, unfortunately, we only have four of us here, so we can't do the octet. <laughs> Um, but yes, we we're going to be doing the entire Mendelssohn Opus 80, and this is one of the staples of the string quartet liter literature. It is a huge change of pace, actually, from the Schumann in terms of uh, emotional darkness and weight. And it's actually the last p uh, full major work that Mendelssohn composed two months before he died. Um, and the entire thing, he actually, when he was first writing it, at, I think at the top somewhere he had written that it was a requiem for Fanny, which was his sister who had recently died. Um, and that really tore him apart. And you'll see when you hear um, how tortured this piece is, uh, that it was incredibly uh, emotional for him. It is, it, Mendelssohn was a very joyful person overall and extremely talented, actually even more so than Mozart exhibited tremendous musical skill at a young age. Some of his most famous pieces were composed in his teens, actually, including the octet that we are not playing today. <laughs> um, really, really talented person and very optimistic. He was also a, a great artist, actually, and in his home, his home now you can still visit in, in also in Leipzig, actually, and is covered in his own paintings, and they're absolutely beautiful. But this, uh, this work is unusual for him in that these themes of darkness really pervade it. And actually, three out of the four movements are downright angry most of the time, just really, really full of rage. There are moments in, in all of those movements of respite from that, but they're, they're brief. So it's a very dark and very, uh, very angry expression with the exception of the slow movement, the third movement, and it's almost as if the entire piece exists to set up this experience of the slow movement. It's incredibly plaintive and intimate and, and vulnerable, and it's really some of his best writing that he ever did. Um, and actually, I was, I was telling Milena, I kind of wanted to share with you guys one thing to listen for in this piece, and specifically in this movement. So one of the really cool things about the music that we play is the way that the composers deliberately change tiny little details for a tremendous emotional meaning. So there's a, in the slow movement, there's a recurring thing that you'll hear. It's not a theme, it's more like a word that you'll hear over and over, and it always goes like this. And I really want you guys to memorize it because there's only one time where he says it differently and it's really important. So can you guys all sing along with me this thing? <laughs> Ready? Uh, So when he doesn't do that, be amazed. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, this incredible work by Mendelssohn. Thanks again so much for being here.
Thank you.